Hi, I'm Geeta Nandi Kotkur, Vice President for Conferences for Asia, Middle East and Africa with Information Security Media Group. And I'm excited to have Michael Kuse, Head of Product Management AppScan from HCL Software with me today. In this freewheeling chat, Mike will share a few perspectives around how organizations can secure their digital future in the AI era and establish a robust application security platform. Thanks, Mike, for joining me today. Uh, thank you, thank you for inviting me. Nice to see you. Same here, Mike. So, Mike, we agree that all the leaders are adopting AI to solve their respective security issues. But is it actually creating a bigger risk for them? Any thoughts there, Mike? Yeah, I mean, we all agree that AI has been transformative. Uh, it's transformative how we develop application. It's been transformed transformative but for, unfortunately how the attackers use AI for defensive purposes. It has been transformative how we can use AI for defensive purposes. But in terms of the risk, there is higher risk and the higher risk comes in from the fact that developers and organizations, whether it's your organization or your software supplier within your software supply, uh, software supply chain, those uh, companies, those developers use AI to generate code. And the studies have shown that the quality of the code, which is the AI generated, is average. It's worse than a code from security perspective generated by, uh, by the senior developers. So as a result, we're getting more code at lower quality, and that is creating a risk by itself. That's one of the risks. There are other risks from AI, for example, the risks of AI data. We can talk about that as well. I think uh, that's quite alarming, the statistics that you have you know, shared with us. But having said that, how can enterprises leverage AI-powered security tools without exposing their most sensitive data to external systems, Mike? Yeah, great question. Uh, we live in a world right now where digital sovereignty has taken the, the front stage. And the reason for that is multifold. AI is absolutely one of the driving factors. If uh, your sensitive data leaks out to the internet, it can, it will be used for hostile agents and potentially be trained for AI. And, you know, once it's trained for AI, AI kind of breaks the sources between the data source and the data uh, usage. So once, a, once AI absorbs the data for its training data set, it's there kind of forever. So we want to prevent that uh, and we want to safeguard our data for that. There's also geopolitical pressures to secure data, to have the data within our countries. So basically, there is a kind of a confluence of factors which really puts a higher perspective on processes, on the data, to have enterprises build controls, secure their data, secure their processes, and make sure that uh, it's we are not being exposed in this new age. I think you were spot on, Mike, when you said so many complexities AI is also creating at the same time. Um, application security becomes the the attackers love the app, the developers, right? So where the application security to safeguard your data becomes most critical. So against this backdrop, uh, Mike, what are the key essentials to build a unified application security platform that can deliver a comprehensive SCA capabilities without compromising the digital sovereignty? Yeah, great question. Well, one thing that's not gonna change is the businesses continue to, to demand greater agility mm -hmm. and they want more functionality and there is data uh, uh, there's a data from a Linux Foundation study, which can, which was published in May of this year of 2025, and that study says that open source is actually very fundamentally useful to creating this higher business agility. You don't need to develop certain software; you just can take it off the shelf. Also, we see an emergence of open source being used for AI itself. Open source AI is actually quite powerful. So the confluence of those factors drive businesses to adopt more and more open source. The only problem is we again are getting exposed. We're, we are in the week, we're just in the weeks of very severe uh, malicious attacks on the NPM ecosystem. Yeah. And that's a very serious, extremely serious. As you saw, uh, there was uh, accounts of a major enterprise companies compromised, uh, financial services companies were compromised by this attack. So while open source is incredibly powerful and useful, it's also a threat and needs to be done uh, handled properly. So. The recipe for the customers is to integrate the SCA tools in their process, to integrate in their pipelines. I haven't said that about the digital sovereignty within the digital sovereignty constraints. 
you don't want to leak this data out to the internet. You want to protect this data, you want to conserve this data, be aware of it, learn about it, mitigate these risks, and then that way you will provide better security while achieving higher business agility. I think you brought the right relevance to open source and as a follow-up, uh, to deep dive into it, how to secure open source components with on-premise as SCA to manage risk without exposing sensitive data? The SCA tools just have to be integrated in the in the development pipelines. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done it before, but what you had before is the open source tools were all running as software as a service on the public cloud. Mm -hmm. That means the data traverses company control boundaries, the data traverses geographical boundaries, and the data basically leaks, it has a chance of leaking. And if the data leaks, as I said, there's a very fundamental risk of data uh, leaking data being used to train AI model to be used by hostile parties. So in order to do that, there is an emergence right now of the open source SCA, as you were saying. And that open source SCA will help you identify those threats early and often, but at the same time within your environment without leaking the data out to the internet and especially unfortunately when you have those type of attacks like an npm attack you mm -hmm. want to identify it you want to mitigate it very very quickly without letting everybody know that you are potentially exposed for that sh short period of time by the way that's another thing ai is being used for offensive security known vulnerabilities are being exploited within uh with ai in a, ma a matter of hours and on, and that's a time scale that enterprises need to respond in have their tools and basically deploy those tools immediately, mitigate it immediately. Otherwise, the attackers using the same AI will learn about your vulnerabilities and exploit them faster than you can mitigate them. Absolutely. Slightly switching gears here, uh, since we're talking about the application security also, which is most critical, where which is the most you know, um, open platform for attackers. So what are the best practices in using shift left security strategy for discovering vulnerabilities, as you said, at the design stage? And is it the best way to do? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, there is actually a lot of debate on this topic right now. Uh, I thought, I, I would say, if you go maybe three, five years back, shift left was the way of doing things. There is debates about it right now. There is a Gardner publication, which was which came out in August, uh, of this year, which says shift left is dead. But it's not that shift left is wrong. There is very fundamental things of shift left, which is integration of security tools in the in the DevOps, in the way how the code is developed. That's here to stay. That's going to be here forever. Now we need the more foundational integrations. Uh, some people call it shift down. Some people call it shift everywhere. I think the terminology will still emerge. But the most foundational item here is that the tooling has to be fully automated. Like the thing which is not changing is automation. Automation, automation, automation. Automation is required. Tool automation has to be integrated in every time we do it. Basically, the same as QA went through automation revolution about 15 years ago. QA is mm -hmm. automated right now. We use automated test systems, right? Security is being fully automated today. That's the message. Whether it be called shift left, shift down, shift everywhere, I think that's an interesting debate which I'd like to talk about more at some other time. Absolutely. And also you mentioned about integration. You mentioned about creating that uniform platform. And um, so how do you think um, organizations need to go about in building this unified platform and establish a robust um, application lifecycle development process? Yeah, yeah. So as we were saying, the what the critical thing was a critical business outcome is managing the time to remediate. If you discover issues and they sit there for a month, three months, six months, and by the way, unfortunately, that's still happening in the industry right now. Well, you're exposed. The attackers can be leveraged in it. So in terms of developing the platform which can uh, provide, this remedi uh, provide the remediation quickly, you have to prioritize issues. And the prioritization of issues comes from multiple factors, multiple tools within the security, uh, if, you, if you want to call it a tool chest working mm -hmm. together, prioritizing and telling you, this is the most important thing. This needs to be remediated within hours, right? Certain things may be less important. You can, you can spend a week remediating them and so on and so forth. So basically, prioritization comes in from one platform. You have to have one platform providing you multiple tools. You use all the tools, different ways of analysis points. 
you know, attackers are not going to be saying, oh, you protect against CAC, that's it, we're not going to attack you anymore, right? Right? You have to have multiple tools, multiple ways to look at security at, uh, at, at your applications, and then prioritize it, use the tools in concert, prioritize it, get a prioritized list, and then go knock down the things from the highest priority to kind of going down the chain. So it means they need to consolidate on the tools? Um, right, yeah. The tools yeah. have to be in one place. The tools have to work with each other. It's mm -hmm. no longer... In 2025, in the age of AI, in the age of speed that AI requires, the tools cannot be independent, uh, not talking to each other. They have to be in each other. They have to be brought all together. You have to have basically multiple ways to look at the security system, bring all the issues to get that together and look at them as a concert and what the highest, most priority issues, what are the most injured, most the urgent issues they need to address. Interesting. And also we heard a lot of practitioners talking about automation. They are in full swing going for automation. So how much does this automation help establish a robust process here in this case? Any areas of focus that you think um, they should look out for? Well, the thing about automation is it continues to be this uh, factor of uh, uh, of taking humans out of the loop and replacing them with AI. To a certain degree, uh, AI can help uh, people get more skilled. AI is very helpful in learning about things which we don't know about. Excellent. It helps with security, it helps with triage. So the automation and AI, and this is uh, here I'm talking about, of course, using AI for defensive purposes to strengthen your security programs, automate everything, identify things early and often. Um, when working together, they can really have great effects. Interesting. So thanks, Mike, for sharing key perspectives around establishing a secure application development process and the DevSecOps culture within an organization. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, and I appreciate your thoughts. So friends, you have been watching Mike um, explaining about the entire process of building a unified platform to secure your development lifecycle. And here, this is Geeta Nandikot Kaur for ISMG. Thanks for watching.